Welcome to the Boat Buyer's Guide video series. Today, we're going to talk about how to buy a saltwater boat in the Jacksonville, Florida market. And we're really excited to have our guest expert today. Uh, Brad is with Yamaha Marine Center. He has a decade of experience in the, in the boating world, is a great resource, and he's going to share a lot of detail with us today. Brad, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. Glad to be here. So we're going to talk today about a bunch of things. Why don't you share with everybody where we're going to be going over the next 15, 20 minutes or so? Yeah, definitely. Uh, the goal today was to kind of get a, a condensed version. We have a lot more material uh, on our website and in different areas for you to do a lot more detailed research. But today I just want to give a brief overview just to make sure, first of all, if the saltwater boat is the right kind of boat for you. There's a ton of product out there and it gets a little overwhelming and confusing. So uh, hopefully we can kind of narrow your search down. Uh, and in that search, uh, a big consideration is what is the best outboard motor option or even if an outboard is right for you. Um, the ride quality of the boat is another very important one, uh, depending on how you're going to be using the boat or where you're going to be using it. And then uh, of course, the quality of the boat itself Itself. Uh, these days it's getting a lot harder to determine just based on dollars what makes a boat a quality boat. Uh, there's a lot of boats out there that aren't built as well and they're charging almost the same dollars for, for some pretty high quality stuff. Um, and then of course sea trialing a boat. Uh, a lot of people have experience in this area. Some people don't. So there's some you know key things that we can take a look at uh, when you're sea trialing a boat to again make sure that this is the proper fit for you and yes every dealer should be offering a sea trial uh, before they sell you a boat it's just the most ethical thing to do uh, and then we'll get into some more dealership stuff with the questions that you can ask your dealer and every dealer if they have nothing to hide they should be pretty forthcoming with with all of these questions and, and really any other questions that you might have and then we're also going to try to help you out with some finance um, financing a boat is a lot different than financing a car or even a house or a piece of jewelry. Uh, so we'll try to give you some insight to that. And then of course the uh, insurance is another expense you have to consider. Uh, and then at the very end of the video, if you guys hang in there, we have some pretty good resources for you and a free gift. Uh, you know, if you suffer through this with us and hopefully it gives you some good value. <laughs> yeah, there's going to be tons of value. I've seen the slide. So let's start with the outboards. Definitely. There's a, again, just like boats, there's a lot of choices and the first thing you have to wrap your head around is if an outboard is right for you. So outboards in general are lower maintenance. Um, they're less expensive to replace if, you know, 10 years down the road, did you need to replace an engine? Um, you can keep them out of the water so you don't have to worry about if you're storing your boat in the water. Uh, a lot of the, the maintenance and the deterioration that happens to inboards or inboard outboard boats, uh, the inboards in, and IO stern drives. There's a bunch of terminology. And again, we have some resources on the website to kind of help define these things for you when you are making your search uh, as far as what engine configuration is right. And then once you find that engine configuration, you get into the brands. Um, we specialize in Yamaha. Uh, they are the best sold outboard engine in uh, the Florida market by almost 60%. I think they're over 60% at most of the shows we go to. Uh, a lot of manufacturers prefer them. They're easy to work with. They have strong warranties. And, you know, this may be opinion, but it's based on uh, a lot of experience that they are the most reliable engine out there. Uh, Suzuki's been making a, a pretty decent uh, stride in the industry as far as repowers. Uh, they don't have quite the same presence in the manufacturers as far as what comes on the boat from the manufacturer, that's usually a Mercury or a Yamaha. Um, and then, you know, Honda, they're tried and true, but they're, they're big, heavy engines. Uh, they run well, they last forever, but uh, finding the right combination of, of weight and horsepower uh, gets a little more difficult there. And then, of course, Evinrude, they're kind of the oddball out there. They're two-stroke technology, which is kind of antiquated, but they've been bringing it to the technological forefront with their injections and things. Uh, my main suggestion is, you know, Figure out what you're going to use the boat for. If performance is a big deal, you know, we can find you the right engine. Uh, most people like a good blend between performance and reliability. That way your maintenance expense is lower. You're not going to have the same issues with the engines that you can with some other brands. And again, that's why we focus on Yamaha. Uh, main thing is try to stay away from uh, non-naturally aspirated engines uh, as far as superchargers and things like that go. Uh, unless, again, you're looking for outright performance. And if that's the case, then maybe reliability is not high on your, on your checklist. But for us, 
Yamaha is kind of the no brainer way to go. And and they go up to they just released their four four twenty five. 425, yeah, V8 425, and uh, <laughs> it's kind of ragging on Honda a little bit there, but their <laughs> engines are big, but they're they're made for a specific purpose. And again, if you have a big offshore center console boat, I mean, the torque that those new engines generate, it's really cool to see the way the industry is going. It's going even more specific. So take your time, do your research, figure out if it's the right engine for you, because you know they they use them in certain applications. And a lot of manufacturers just don't pay attention and engineer their boat properly. You know, they'll, they'll make a boat that should be rated for a 250 or 300 and slap a 425 on there just because they can. Right. So that's old. where the sea trial comes in is, is knowing what you have before you make that final decision. Definitely. Yeah. So let, let's talk about, let's talk about the, the next piece, which is the actual construction of the hull. Yeah, and and this is like I was saying is this is where the the water gets real muddy, of what do I want to do with this boat? And if I'm constantly in a certain condition, if I'm in shallow water and backwater all the time, then you need to focus on more of uh, as we have here on the slide a flat bottom boat because that reduces the amount of water that you need to run the boat. Um, whereas a steeper dead rise like the picture above that um, is going to be a better quality of ride it'll run through uh choppier conditions it'll run through heavier seas uh but you need more water to float in for that so again boating is always going to be a compromise so it's finding what you if you can find a boat that does 75 to 80 percent of what you want it to do is usually a winner in my book you're always going to be compromising somewhere you know if you do have a, a deep dead rise boat um and you find one day that the fish are all inshore, well, you might be out of luck uh, getting into some of the creeks you want to get into. But then, of course, the flatter the boat, the shower you're running, you're not going to be able to take it as far into the ocean if that's what you're really looking to do with it. So, again, figure out what you're going to do. That will steer you in the right direction. And then you can start looking at different manufacturers because that plays a huge part in it too uh, as far as the engineering that goes into these boats. Some companies choose – to buy a mold and build a boat, other companies choose to engineer a boat from the ground up, which is kind of what we specialize in is a more engineered product to, again, do the job that you need it to do better than anyone else on the market. And that's where the true value comes in. Yeah, the, the little details that a, a regular Joe may not notice on the, the bottom of the boat, they all tend to look the same but you start looking at, at the specifics and, and why they're built that way. And you really can see how they're going to make a difference in, in real life application. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And again, it, if, if it even works for your application, so just because it's important to this one person doesn't make it important to somebody else. Um, but overall, you know, quality companies that maintain a quality reputation and take care of their clients in the end is really what you're looking for. Um, and the, the dealer to support them. You know, I, I did another video not too long ago about boat show, buying at a boat show and how important it is to purchase the right product from the right dealer. Uh, so it all, it all muddies the water a little bit. But. <laughs> yeah. And you mentioned the right application, talking with the right expert in your marketplace is also key. So they can, the, some of the little nuances that you said, you know, one boat may not be right for the, the next person working with that expert who can, kind of take your hand and answer all of your questions and point out some things that maybe you didn't realize, uh, even if you are an experienced boater, can be very valuable. Oh, yeah, finding the, that right person, that right match, that, uh, you know, personalities gel and you can tell they're experienced. And, of course, not, not being taken advantage of. A lot of the times you run into that used car personality or mentality and it's just all about selling the boat and not selling the experience, which is what we really avoid here. Um, I, you know, we don't want a wrong purchase to ruin your boating experience for your lifetime. This is, you know, this is something fun that you can pass down to generations and generations, and especially buying a quality boat. Um, you know, several of the brands we sell, you can continue to repower for as long as you choose to own it. Uh, it's not a, it, it doesn't expire. You know, if it's built well, it'll last forever. Yeah, absolutely. And speaking of that, let, let's talk about some things that, that come from a quality build versus an inferior build. Yeah, the, the, you know, the cost of entry into the market with uh, a quality built boat, it, it seems 
almost insurmountable. And we'll get into the finance and stuff down the road. But a lot of the times clients can afford a lot more boat than they think they can just based on the terms that they finance these things. So then you can really set that budget that allows you to buy quality because at this position of, of the asset of the boat, you know, you are going to get more money for a quality bill because people recognize the quality in the brand. They have the history behind them and you can demand more money for it. I mean, some of our boats were recuperating 50 to 60 percent, you know, 10, 12 years down the road of, of original purchase price, especially due to inflation. Um, there's a lot less upkeep with a quality boat as far as uh, the quality of gel coat. Uh, a lot of the less expensive, I hate using the word less expensive, but the uh, inferior builds use a less expensive gel coat or not as much fiberglass or too much resin. And all this stuff starts to come into the perfect cocktail of getting spider cracks or even structural issues with the construction. Because it's really what you can't see on a boat that provides, that costs the most. I mean, we have several manufacturers uh, that they only use quality materials and, and different thicknesses and densities and stuff. You know, they give us some pretty cool cutouts and, and things to use to show people the quality. And I mean, they go so far as into showing us their engineering cards of exactly the densities that they use, uh, what materials they're using. And I mean, you can see just how robust these things are built, which you wouldn't have an idea of unless somebody cuts a boat apart and gives you pieces of it. Yeah. Um, and that, that all, should all translate into a, a better aesthetic, using higher quality materials all over the boat, especially in the, in the area of wiring. I can't tell you how many times we've had people come in and, you know, they're in a nightmare scenario where their boat just won't work because they're chasing, you know, electrical gremlins all over the boat. And then that kind of brings us into, you know, that next bullet point as far as the spirit of the warranty that every manufacturer can sit there and tell you, oh, yeah, we got a great warranty. We cover things for this long. But, I mean, we've had experience with some brands that we used to carry that we no longer carry just based specifically on the way they treated their customers after the point of sale where they said they were going to cover something, but then they kind of backtracked on that and didn't cover it to an extent they should have or just outright denied the warranty. So we partner with manufacturers that we feel are going to support us and our clients. Um, and that also falls onto how the dealership is going to act and react to their customers and, and what they're willing to do to stand up for them. So, you know, look for quality. You can't always tell based on price anymore. Yeah. A lot of times the price may be lower and that's how you can tell, but in the long run, you're going to spend more money on maintaining the boat, fixing little aesthetic blemishes and the aesthetics of those less, the inferior boats, they don't hold up as long. They're using cheaper materials. So they tend to degrade it. Yeah. It looks great. It looks flashy in the showroom, but those boats two to three years down the road, that's where you're really starting to see the degradation of materials, the, the spider gra you know, the spider cracks in the gel coat. Um, and like I said, even structural stuff where you can feel the floors of the, the decks getting soft. Uh, and, and a lot of the times that stuff's not covered under warranty or they figure a way to get out of it, which is what we mean by the weasel clauses down there. They're weaseling their way out of the, covering you of protecting you as a, as a customer. And then that's where the dealer should come in and, and provide you that support after the sale and buying that quality brand gives us the opportunity to do that because it does cost a little bit more, you know, and, and you're paying for a level of service and you're paying for a level of product. So, you know, hopefully that kind of summarizes some of the main differences, but it, it does pay to buy good quality up front, And, and yeah. we have a lot of resources to help, guide you down those paths yeah the the boating environment in jacksonville is is a harsh one with the salt with the sun and the the sand and and making sure that you have a, a quality boat a quality dealer um and a quality uh manufacturer behind the warranty is is all key so let's talk about some of the options that that may make sense for some of the boaters it's it's obviously as you said earlier each boater is going to have different needs, but let's talk about some of the common options that uh, folks down there are using. Yeah, definitely. It, and again, it's a broad category because it really needs to be tailored to uh, how you're using the boat. You know, just from the electronics is probably one of the most insanely expensive things that you can get into and kind of get lost, uh, you know, down a dark hallway, um, you know, size of screens, uh, what their capabilities are, 
uh, how deep you're going to be fishing, uh, what kind of imaging products you need. Uh, and we're trying to provide more content on this that's, that's going to be searchable as well because it is very specific to each use. You know, if you're offshore fishing, you're going to want something that has a, a transducer, a sonar module that is going to be conducive to finding those structures and those fish. Um, so th that's probably where we need to spend most of the time educating people is because you can spend a lot of money on this and not have it do exactly what you need it to do. So again, finding that that quality dealer that really listens and, and takes in what you're doing with the product to have it fit and, and serve its purpose properly for you, um, especially with the electronics. And the other stuff, you know, you can kind of make mistakes there, you know, with the, like the fishing platforms with where I want rod holders. Am I going to run this specific fishing setup, a downrigger, an outrigger, uh, yeah, they can get pricey, but they don't have to be until you figure out if that's how you're using the boat. Uh, some comfort package options. This has become very popular in the last, I don't know, four to five years as people have been coming out of maybe having multiple boats, you know, one fishing boat and then a cruising boat, uh, an inshore boat versus an offshore boat, something like that. Uh, we've been, uh, manufacturers have been going down either a fishable path or a cruisable path. And then a few, uh, like, Pursuit is one that we carry that has been great about this is they give you so much comfort and quality and cruisability and they build just enough fishability into the boats to keep everyone in the family happy where you can do just about everything you want to do with the boat, um, especially when it comes to like head compartments. They make them very comfortable, big enough that you can actually get in and out of them. Uh, a lot of marine, you know, sanitation, uh, toilets, holding tanks, uh, they give you several options for, you know, pumping them out or being able to macerate them overboard when you're, you know, far enough offshore and things of that nature that adds to the comfort level as well as, you know, having the cushions, the ski toe for doing water sports, uh, trim tabs is a big one for offshore use or even inshore if you're, you're running in some nasty conditions, especially here in the St. John's river, it can look like the ocean pretty quick. Um, <laughs> And then one of the most popular ones recently that's been popping up has been the different shade options. Uh, several companies have been coming out with, uh, you know, some uh, power retractable electronic motor versions that kind of integrate into the boat uh, to give you a seamless option. Or there's some more analog versions where you can, you know, snap them onto the top and there's poles that you can cover the, the cockpit and the bow area of the boats. Again, just to, to give you several different ways to use the product, um, you know, from family-friendly fishing to pulling a tube to going out and doing a afternoon cruise and, and grabbing lunch or something like that. Uh, they're making the, the boats pretty universal. Yeah, and, and the, the million different ways you could configure a boat and, and package it out and equip it with electronics, working with that person that's an expert that, um, that knows – what options are available and then can also be, be listening to what is the way you're going to use the boat so they can match those up and, and really be a, a resource for you when you're um, picking out the right boat. That's, that's fantastic. Now, what about when it comes to working with dealers, any questions that, that should be asked? Um, this slide kind of is, is, I don't, I don't maybe call it our FAQ section, but this is kind of the stuff that pops up shortly after the sale, you know, that, that whole period of purchasing the boat, you know, I like to refer to it as you, you get to date the client at that point in time. It's exciting. They're excited about their, their potential for a purchase. Even when they first purchase it, you're still kind of dating them. And then it becomes a marriage over time. You know, you start learning these things the longer you're involved with these clients because it, it's a boat. There's going to be something, no matter how much money you spend on it, you're going to have an issue with a pump or a, a fuse or something's going to happen. And, you have to have that relationship set up with the dealer in order to handle these things. So just like the first one, how do you handle the warranty issues? Well, we're lucky enough to partner with manufacturers that are, are very strong on their warranties that believe in their product and they really support them. It's more like you're, you're entering a family truly like a marriage than, than you're just buying a boat. Um, but again, that's, that's where buying quality comes in is, is how they treat you after the sale. Um, other questions like what if we keep the boat on our lift and we don't have a trailer uh, we maintain several trailers here that we often coordinate with people. Um, you know, depending on the boat, we offer several free pickups uh, when they're still in their their uh, service period or their warranty time frame. 
depending on the condition or we have a technician that's available to travel. So we travel to some of the local dry stacks and things like that. Um, our owner, uh, we're fortunate enough to have a great owner here. They're in the dealership almost every day, uh, active in what we do. And, you know, it's their reputation on the line. So they only hire the people that are going to represent the dealership, how they would want to be treated. Um, and then having a, a strong service department, that's probably one of the most difficult things hiring knowledgeable people that have been in the industry long enough to know what's right versus wrong, to see a problem come in and have that experience that, Oh, I've seen this before. Um, it's, it, you know, that's huge. And there's not many of those out there. I think, um, what Yamaha master certified techs, uh, there's, there's probably a handful of them in the state. Um, so that's something important to look at is, is that person specialized in what you need them to do? Uh, our technician does everything from, from rigging to servicing to repairs. Um, <clears throat> another thing is we, as a dealership are here to educate. It's yeah. Ultimately our goal is to sell you something, but again, unless we find that right to something for, I can't tell you how many times we've had people walk in our door, just looking for something we don't sell. Uh, we're a full service brokerage too. So if we can help find it for you, then that's great. But you know, we don't mind referring people to the proper place that we would trust in order for you to find that boat that meets your, your requirement, that experience that you're looking for. Cause down the road, you might want to do something else and we might carry that product for you at that point in time. So we try to provide all of our knowledge. Um, yeah, I've been doing this since I was 16 years old. So I've been in this industry over 20 years. Uh, you know, the other sales guy here, who's our broker has been doing it for about 30 years. Um, you know, use your dealership's experience and, and, and put it to work for you. Um, and we do that, you know, personally, uh, we try to make as much content, uh, available as possible on our YouTube channel. Uh, we put it on our website as well through our, uh, learning center. Um, so is your dealer again, working for you? to find you what will work for you instead of just trying to sell you a product and, and move on to the next person. So we feel we're pretty good at that and, and don't mind giving you an honest opinion. Yeah. It's one of the reasons you were selected uh, for this to be the expert in the Jacksonville areas, not only your knowledge and, and your experience, but also your willingness to provide it to everybody knowing that the right ones that you have the right products for, you're going to be able to help, but you're helping all boaters in the area, which is fantastic. Um, which leads us to the proper sea trial. It, it, you mentioned earlier, you must do one. So talk a little bit about that real quick. It, it, it kind of encompasses all the education that everyone has done up to that point in time. You know, did I find the right boat for me? Um, is it going to do what I need it to do? And if it's going to, then you need to test it in that situation. So if you're buying an offshore boat and you need to see how it runs through a, a two to six foot swell, and that's probably something you need to consider and find the right day and right time to make that happen. Um, so that way you can really get a feel for how the boat is going to work for you and the environment that you've selected it to run in. So go run through that chop, you know, if you're going to be doing bay crossings all the time and make sure uh, it, it's dry enough for you. Every boat's going to be wet to some extent. Um, depending on the wind and sea state, but you need to figure out if that's livable, you know, make sure it handles properly, you know, give it some gas or tell the salesperson to, to put it through its paces to make sure uh, there's certain terminology in the industry, you know, cavitation, chine walk, uh, it can drive you nuts. You know, everybody calls something different, but as long as it feels good and does what you think it should do, then you have to figure that out before you go spending the kind of money that these things are, are bringing nowadays. Uh, make sure you understand how to work engine trim versus trim tabs uh, to get the boat to, to feel comfortable. Because a lot of the times with the construction of these things, you know, the deeper dead rises, they call it, it's a, it's a more tender boat. Uh, at, when you're floating, it tends to, to move around more depending on the sea state, whereas flat boats, they don't move as much. So you got to weigh those options. So again, having the boat in its environment that you intend to use it is a, a pretty important step in this whole process to make sure you're, you're making the right decision. Yeah, I think, I think that's key to know how you're going to use it. And if you're, if you're a trailer boater, some things to think about. Definitely. This is where your day ends and begins. So don't let somebody uh, <laughs> lead you in the wrong direction. Spend a little bit more money on the trailer. Uh, again, I know it's something else to, to research, but Right away, you know, in a saltwater environment, you need to make sure you're at least doing yourself 
uh, an aluminum trailer. Make sure all the hardware on there is, is aluminum or stainless. Um, you know, the quality of the trailer, I can't speak enough. I've seen so many people try to leave to go boating in the middle of the day and they're, they have a trailer failure or something and, and they just can't even get to the water and that just ruins the experience. Uh, the fit of the boat on the trailer is a huge deal. Um, all of our trailers are custom matched to each individual boat. So if they don't have the template, the trailer company physically comes, measures the boat, um, and then does all their welding and, and building the trailer around the model. Um, and it, it's a huge safety deal. I mean, that's a lot of money to be toting around, you know, to, to have an improper load or uh, cheap tires on it that are going to blow out or, or degrade over time. Um, and then, you know, LED lights are a big thing. Uh, they easier to seal up, use less power. Uh, again, it's, it's an overall quality thing. And, and normally people that are selling higher quality product will already recommend something higher quality in, in your trailer and your tow, your tow rig to get you to and from the water safely. Yeah, that, it's something that is kind of a second thought. But what about those that are, are financing, some options to, to think about? Financing a marine product is pretty specific. Uh, I've, I've seen it time and time again where people have all their banking in one place and, and they like to keep it that way. But a, a lot of banks don't like to, to finance uh, what I would consider non-essential items. Uh, you know, you think 10, 12 years ago, we went through the financial crunch. Uh, you know, what's the first thing people stop paying for? And it's, it's RVs and boats. It's one of the things that people don't think about when, you know, money gets tight. So it's a, it's a very specific niche and there are banks that specialize in it so they can offer better rates and, and better product with better terms. So, you know, a, a 15 to 20 year term on a boat loan is not uncommon. And, and some banks don't like going that long or they don't feel comfortable with it. Or if they do, they're going to charge a higher interest rate, which Marine specific lenders that again, a reputable dealer would have and can direct you to uh, is a lot of times going to be better than your local credit union or your local bank that may not specialize or may not even want to deal with this product. Um, it, it's, it does benefit you greatly to go with a, a bigger lender uh, unless maybe you have some specific relationship with a local credit union because I've seen some of those, but it's few and far between. Um, but, but most of the lenders we work with, that's all they do is marine and RV and um, – they look out for you too. You know, I, I know we're going to talk about insurance in a little bit, but they actually look out for you as far as what products they will finance based on their experience of their clients being uh, taken advantage of. So it, it, there's more advantages than just interest rate in term. Yeah. Finding, finding the right uh, program with down payment and, and the, the full package and having that, that expert um, helping you out is, is key. And then you mentioned insurance. So share a little bit about insurance. Uh, again, varies greatly on the style of boat, type of boat, and how you're using it. So make sure that your insurance carrier gets specific with you on how you're using the boat because I've seen it, again, where people are buying coverages that they're never going to use. They're buying these you know, exorbitant tow packages that would cover them for 50 miles offshore, and you know, it's a 20-foot it's a boat that they're not going to take off the beach or something. So having that knowledge, if you don't have the time to do the research, you know, we have maritime specific insurance agents that work with us on, on, on asking the right questions. So you're getting value out of, out of what you're buying instead of just, okay, I'm covered. Yeah. A thousand dollars a year doesn't sound that bad, but you know, I'm, I'm getting what I pay for and I'm only paying for what I need. Yeah, that, that is key. And so you, you mentioned at the beginning that if they stuck around to the end, you provided some great value, some great insights. Um, tell them about the, the Boating Jacksonville magazine, the special boat buyers edition. Yeah, we, we generated this magazine uh, to cover a lot of this stuff and to give you more research sources in one area um, to help you find the information that you need at hopefully from a, from a local area. So this is all Jacksonville specific stuff, uh, very specific to our area and our marketplace. Not that it's not going to provide so many value outside of the Jacksonville area, but we like to use, you know, a lot of local information, a lot of local knowledge. And uh, it, it's again, one of those resources that we just wanted to provide to people to, to give them an overall experience with boating and not just try to sell you something. So it, it really is informational. So, and you can also contact Brad, 
uh, at uh, the number listed 904 669 5307 or his email brad at ymcjacks.com and he would be glad to like he said so much of it is dependent on exactly how you're going to use the boat the area the people you'll be out with the activities that you'll be doing and brad and barton's expertise to help you select the right boat the right options uh the right trailer the right financing insurance even is uh is really a valuable resource and as he said if they don't have the right style for you he will let you know uh because that's the right thing to do for uh for his clients definitely that's my cell phone by the way so you can get me anytime anywhere text me call me whatever you need so thank you for for uh listening brad any any parting words now take your time. This it's a, uh, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. So get all the information you can and use every resource you can and, and uh, trust who you buy from. Very good. Well, thank you, Brad. And be sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, Brad and, and Barton are always putting out new videos of new boats they have available, uh, additional resources. Uh, he, he just did one for how to buy at the boat show. Uh, so there are some great resources there. Subscribe so you're notified. Go pick up a copy of that magazine. It, it's a very popular magazine down there, yamahamarinejacks.com. And you can also watch some additional videos. Be sure to like and comment. If you found this valuable, go ahead and like the video, comment below, um, and ask a question. Uh, this is a, a video that's updated from time to time, and we will – Go ahead and, and answer your questions in the next edition or just answer the question right in the comments. Thanks for watching, and we will see you on the water.